Hello and welcome to the Knitting Traditions podcast. My name is Inga and this is my little corner on the internet where I talk about mostly knitting. Um, I hope you're doing well. I hope you're sitting down with something to drink. I am drinking a almond, I think it's an almond latte in my Knit Swag mug, which is getting a lot of use. Um, it keeps my coffee warm for hours which is great because often if I'm in the middle of a row I will just keep knitting and then I forget that I have a beverage and it goes cold. So in honor of this episode I brought this so that I have something warm to drink for the entirety of the episode. Um, if you're a returning viewer, welcome back. I'm continuing to try to use this new setup uh, I am trying to look into the lens. I don't know where I'm at, but hopefully it's okay. And if you're a new viewer here, you're so welcome. I hope you enjoy this content. All right, so um, we can start with what I'm wearing. Uh, this is a very old sweater. I'm going into, I'm starting to use a lot of my old sweaters now to show you. This was a sweater where I used the stitch count from a book that I had called Viola Knits. I think that's what the name is. I don't have the book anymore. Um, and then I was playing around with cables, so I just created a lot of cabling that wasn't in the pattern, like this cable in the front here. Um, you're so, usually you have some purl stitches at each side of a cable to make it pop out of the fabric. I was new to knitting cables, I didn't know that, I didn't do it, but I think it still looks okay, even though it doesn't have those uh, indented uh, pearl bumps on the sides. I also did a cable underneath the arms on the side here, and it has a split hem that I decided to make, and it also has some faux cabling uh, instead of ribbing at the bottom. I was really just playing around with, with stitches. Um, I made a mistake at the beginning here that created like a bigger hole than the eyelets were supposed to. Um, I don't mind. I don't wear this sweater a lot just because I don't, I don't like the sleeves of this design. It's a balloon sleeve and then has a very long tight cuff. I think it looks a bit funny. Um, so I don't wear it a lot, but it's it's comfortable. It's a woolen sweater um, of an unnamed yarn that I bought many, many years ago on sale. I think the name of the yarn might have been Kitten, Kit, Kitte, something like that. It doesn't matter. It was a fingering weight wool yarn. Um, I don't know. I found a, f a simple raglan sweater and I modified it with adding lots of cables. That's something you can do if you want to play around. If you have a simple pattern, uh, just add some cabling if you want to. Um, sometimes I find that easier than following a very complicated cabled pattern because then I know that it's a simple sweater and then I'm just doing this one thing right here to practice. And somehow I found that easier as a, when I was a beginner knitter. Um, all right, so that's what I was wearing. Today is an episode filled with actually many finished objects, some whips, and a lot of acquisitions due to it having, it's been advent, I have some packages to open, and also things that have been sent to me. So uh, the acquisition part will be at the end, and we will start with the knitting. So maybe, we can start with um, the largest finished object, which is my Nordiska. So I talked about this uh, in the last episode and the one before, I think. This is the Nordiska by Caitlin Hunter. It's a top-down v-neck construction with color work at the bottom of the body as well as on the sleeves and I did some modifications to this um, 
by accident I made the v-neck slightly steeper I talk about how I did that in previous episodes I, I'm not gonna repeat everything because it will be a very long episode but um, it worked out great I knit the body longer before starting the color work in in the original version of hers the color work starts pretty much right after the sleeve and body separations and I did probably uh, 15 to 20 centimeters um, of stockinette before starting the color work I did the color work exactly as in the pattern the ribbing at the bottom where is the camera <laughs> I actually did slightly longer than hers I first did it as instructed um, but I have knitted this in Usk which is uh, a wool um, yarn from Hillesvog, a Norwegian producer, which is very rustic and rustic wool, which is minimally processed, have a lot of memory which is great because when you wash it, it'll bounce right back to where it's supposed to be you do it doesn't lose its shape but that also means that it has a lot of memory when it comes to a short ripping stockinette has a tend to roll up on itself which is why we often have ribbing at the ends of our sleeve, neck, and body to prevent that rolling up from happening. And because this has a lot of memory, what happened is when um, I knit those few rows of um, ribbing as instructed, the rolling effect was still too strong, so it was flipping up like this. Um, and with washing, it it helps and blocking, but it was rolling over so much that I felt like every time I washed it, I would have to make sure to pin it down and be careful because if not, it would roll up. So I ripped back my bind off and I just knitted two or three rows longer. Um, so I have this much of a ribbing now and it works beautifully it's not it's not going up on itself uh, this pattern has a beautiful cabled detail going down the raglans the sleeves i also wanted to have longer full length the in the pattern they're like a three quarter length sleeve you start the color work straight after splitting almost um, so what i did is i knit the sleeve portion just as long as the body portion before starting the color work and my arms are longer than my torso so I knew that by doing this probably my sleeves would be too short but my plan was to just do the ribbing for however long I needed to get the right length in the pattern the color work chart for the sleeves are is a longer chart than the body so that also helps compensate a little bit so I didn't actually have to do that much of a longer ribbing at the sleeves um, to make it the right length just a little bit more um, than on the body in the pattern there are also some decreases in the chart of the sleeve but I know that I prefer a straight sleeve after having knitted several sweaters. Those are the ones I wear the most. Um, I don't know why, I just, I love the look of it and I love the feel of it and I find it practical um, for me. So I just didn't do those decreases and I knitted it completely straight. Um, I did my color work on half a needle size larger than my stockinette, just so that it wouldn't be cinched in. And I did my ribbing at the, as in the same needle as the color work because I don't... Almost every pattern with ribbing tells you to use a smaller needle size for your ribbing to make it cinched in. But I don't like the cinched in look, I want it to be straight. So I either use the same needle as my stockinette or I even go up. So that's what I did here. I went up a needle size. Uh, the same, So I had... Uh, one needle size for the stockinette and then half a size larger for my color work and ribbing and it created the kind of look that I wanted 
And honestly, I love this design of her. Um, it's a stunning color work. I really enjoy the v-neck. I don't really have many v-necks uh, in my wardrobe. Um, and I find that when I lift my arms up in this, because of the v-neck, it moves in a bit, so my sleeves go up a bit. So if I'm doing something with my hands, that kind of gets the sleeves out of the way on its own. So it's great. Um, and I've been wearing this almost daily. The fabric with the Ask from Hillesvog is amazing. It's so warm and it's just like a comfort to wear it. I don't find it scratchy. I wear this next to skin with just underwear underneath and it's just great. I think I will definitely make more in the future. I love this color combination, which is very similar to what Caitlin Hunter uh, used in her pattern. And I love it. I have other combinations that I can do. This sweater is my new favorite, if not at least my top three. Um, and I just love it so much. So yeah, that is my Nordiska sweater with a few modifications, but honestly, I feel like those modifications just make the color work shine even more, especially on the sleeves. So. She made a great pattern um, and now it's the perfect um, fit for what I want it to be. So yeah. So that was my Nordiska, which I had to stop wearing so I could show it to you guys. And um, what else? I finished another project. So last time I had shown um, this hat and now I forgot the name again, but this is a free pattern from Pearl Soho. It's one of those classical um, fisherman ribbed hats and I used um, I think it was the May uh, Box from my knit crate, uh, which is a monthly subscription, which is I'm an affiliate member of and each month you get two skeins. You can see what kind of skein, but you don't get to choose the color. And I think this was Forget Me Not, um, was the colorway. And I knit one hat, which was supposed to be the small adult, but to me it looked like a large adult, so that one has been gifted for Christmas. And I still had enough yarn, so I cast on the toddler size, which fits me. So, that's the toddler size. Apparently I am a toddler. At least my head is, which is probably why I have a horrible memory. No space. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy with how this turned out. This was an alpaca camel and I think wool blend. Um, I say it in the previous episode. And I have gotten two hats out of those two skeins and I still had a little bit left. So I cast on a headband and this was 120 stitches and I knit two purled two until I completely ran out of yarn. I had to rip back almost a whole round because I had this many stitches left to bind off when I ran out and uh, I bound off with like this much to go. So now I have a new headband. Um, I'm sorry if I keep looking down. I have like a mirror to see what the screen sees just so that I know I'm in frame. But yeah, so I now have... Eh. I did not think this hairdo through. I now have a headband to keep me warm when I go skiing if I want to keep my hair up. Um, which I really do prefer because it, it can sometimes get a bit warm with like a thick hat if you're skiing because uh, when you go cross-country skiing you do start out quite cold but then you get really warm from moving a lot so a headband is nice to keep your ears warm. This is great if you're not moving too much and it's really cold outside so both of these are some nice additions to my winter wardrobe. And I 
have a lot of people in my life who are having little children or babies. I think that's what they're called. Uh, <laughs> and I feel like they know that I am a knitter. So I feel like they should get something knitted. Um, I don't enjoy knitting things for babies. Just I, I really enjoy the knitting in the round without having to think for a few hours. And when you knit tiny garments, there's always something happening. So uh, it's not as mindless for me. But I had some leftover um, Zakami yarns. I think it's the fluff sock base. And I made <laughs> some newborn socks. This is a free pattern on Ravelry. Um, I think it's called the perfect newborn socks, but I will put um, everything in the description box below this YouTube video. So uh, yeah, I made these little socks with the leftovers. So it's those, it's a, it's a ribbed cuff and then it's a heel flap and gusset. And then you continue those um, ribbed stitches across the top of the foot and then uh, it's a Kitchener toe construction. So yeah, it's a really cute little pattern. I hope they fit. I know a lot of uh, newborns tend to kick their socks off. So I don't know if the, if the ribbing is tight enough to keep them on, um, but yeah. I'm gifting this to one of those people. And yes, that was some of my finished objects, but I have more. I've done quite a bit of knitting since last time. So after I finished my Nordiska in Ask, as you can see the colors here, I had some, some leftovers from the yarn, I think I have, yeah. So these are the three colors that I used. So I had some leftovers and I've, I, I drive to work and it's really cold here in Norway in the winter. Um, and I don't have heating in my driver's wheel. I have a really old car. Um, so my fingers get really cold. So I've been wanting to knit some fingerless mittens and then we were out we were without internet last weekend, so the inspiration came to me and I cast on and knitted up these um, fingerless mittens right here. And I wrote up the pattern, I called for testers, and a lot of testers are have already finished. So I'm hoping to release this pattern by Christmas Eve. This will be my new pattern and the name will be Huldra's Mittens. Huldra is um, a creature from folklore here in Norway and my cabin. I've actually named Huldra. Um, so yeah, it's just uh, a name of a character that has several meanings in my life. My father wanted to name me Huldra uh, as a baby and he swears he's serious about this, so that's weird. Um, but yeah, these are Hildra's mittens and it's, in my opinion, it's a quite easy pattern for beginners if you want to try color work because um, there are no complicated color work. It's quite intuitive. Once you've knit like four or eight stitches, you kind of know what's going on and you can just keep going. Don't need to follow the chart at all times. Um, and it uses three colors. It's great for scrap yarn. Um, I think so far all the testers have gotten back and the pattern is made for heavy fingering to sport weight. So this used Usk, which has 315, I believe, meters per 100 grams. So that's a sport weight. Um, and the gauge is 24 stitches. And I think nobody has used more than 40 grams for the main color. And then the two contrast colors, uh, I think almost everyone has used less than 10 grams and five grams for those two colors, almost. Uh, this is the smallest size because I have tiny hands. Um, I have a size six, 
6.5 in glove size and um, in the pattern I include uh, a sort of a, a picture where you can measure across here to find out your glove size and then pick the size based on that. So this is the smallest size and then this is the second smallest size. I have not washed these yet. These are knit in Finul uh, from uh, Rauma and they are 350 uh, meters per 100 grams but these come in 50 gram balls so um, if you have three balls of phenyl you can get away with three pairs of mittens and I have tested these because I made the second smallest and the second largest uh, using uh, eh, so much yarn using these colors right here so the the beige white one is color 4078 and the green one is color 4129 and the golden aspects to them is the color 4125 and I am working on the third pair also making the second largest size because I'm thinking these will make some great gifts for men in my family who have the second largest size. Um, and yeah, so this one used the beige for the main color and here for the second largest amount. So it all, I, in the third mitten, it will be used for the smallest amount, which is less than five grams and I have plenty enough for that. So that's how I know that you can get three mitten pairs out of three balls of phenol. Um, maybe if you were to make three of the largest of the sizes, which is like a glove size 8.5, um, then maybe, maybe it wouldn't be enough, but it might be enough. Uh, somebody else would have to try that, but definitely for the second largest sizes, it's fine. Um, and yeah, and this is the largest size in the pattern, which is a men's size uh, 8.5. So as you see, my hand is quite tiny compared to this, um, if you were to compare those two mitten sizes from the smallest to largest. Um, for this one I used four different uh, scrap yarns just to show that you can combine. Um, I think I had 28 grams of this gray which is Tuve by Saneskan which is a fingering weight and I quickly realized after casting on that oh wait 28 grams that's not going to be enough for the largest size so I used some phenol for the ribbing at the top of the thumb and fingers and I just made it. Um, I thought I had saved my scraps but maybe I didn't. Oh wait, yeah, I did. I had this much left um, after doing that so I'm glad I didn't play yarn chicken. And the red or rust that's I think that's also a phenol and the green is a uh, British Breeds by Marie Wallen which I used for my chestnut cardigan by Marie Wallen so yeah I am really happy with this pattern uh, I've knit a pair a day <laughs> so it's it's quite a quick knit um, and I'm gonna make more because then I have gifts to give and I know that not a lot of people have a lot of fingerless mittens but they are really great for when you need your fingers but still want to be warm and these are really warm. I have not washed the two samples knit in phenol yet um, but the the ask and this one which also is a lot of phenol and tuva has softened up beautifully and by using the non-superwash 100% wool yarns, 
if you knit them too big you can always felt them a little um, so that is an option um, and everyone has very different color work gauge so uh, this is a nice way to practice and figure out how to carry your floats across the thumb or you can just do color work on the thumb too of course um, yeah I catch my floats every stitch but that is because I don't like having long floats inside and also a, what part of the reason of catching the floats is you get this double fabric inside so it's double double the warmth oops and by catching every stitch there is no floats to catch your thumb or fingers on when you put them on so yeah I I like to do that and I am working on my last a pair of these three funeral balls and I should I know this I should have picked some some balls with more contrast to them because you can barely see the color work uh, with the green and the golden next to each other but I just picked three colors that I liked and I don't mind that the color work isn't very visible on this because it's not just about the color work, it's also about the functionality and the warmth. So I could have omitted <clears throat> the color work, but I chose to knit it because it gives that double layer of yarn, which gives it warmth. And uh, maybe in the future I'll do a tutorial on how I knit, but I knit continental, which means I hold the yarn across my left index finger. And usually I knit holding it in this position right here but when I do two two stranded color work I have one on each side of my knuckle and that allows me to pick the stitches and I use the contrast color closest to my heart because that makes it the most dominant color in the color work and it will pop out more um, than the, the strand held here furthest away from my heart and then I just knit over and underneath this strand to pick the main color and that catches the floats automatically so it's quite speedy um, and also when you catch your floats um, often that you don't have long spaces between that makes sure that your floats aren't too tight so you don't get that very cinched in um, look that you can get with color work if your floats are too tight so that also helps and one of the reasons I catch it all the time <laughs> uh, even when you don't have to so yeah uh, four pairs of fingerless mittens the Huldras mittens hopefully coming out by Christmas Eve if anyone wants a Christmas Eve cast on uh, yes I have a half finished object as well I have knitted one sock uh, this is my typical vanilla sock I have two sock patterns um, Moore's Hell because of the heel construction and the rustic cable socks which uses the same heel construction but it has a rounded toe so technically this is a vanilla sock that's based on my rustic cable socks because I do love the rounded toe construction because it doesn't have uh, you don't need to do a Kitchener toe uh, you just knit two together and there's no seams to step on it's just nice and smooth all over uh, so yeah I basically knit the rustic cable socks with my Moore's Hell construction which is in that pattern as well I just didn't do the cables I was contemplating doing the cables but again I'm, I've been feeling the need to just do stockinette um, and I have knit this in the lovely Mondim yarn by Retrosaria Pomar which I got in my advent calendar from Sarah from Day to Day Knits another podcaster and I must say I love knitting with this and I love the fabric it gets when knitted up it's just so smooth um, it's beautiful 
and I've knit this on 2.25 millimeter needles. This is the color 302. And I've already cast it on, cast on my second sock. Um, and I'm using small circulars, which are about 11 inches long from, I think I bought these from Sanna's Garn. Uh, I find that nine inch circulars, they're too small. It, it paints my hands a lot more than the 11 inch. The 11 inch uh, feels a lot more comfortable in my hands and they are still small enough for the circumference of my leg and foot. So that is one ho half finished object uh, work in progress. I have also gotten a little bit of progress done on my Petite Knits Oslo hat, um, which I keep in my very beautiful Christmas bag from the Urban Stitcher, which I got last year because it's a Christmas-ish color. It's a bit brighter. <laughs> this uh, is a hat that I intend to use when going skiing so that I am quite visible uh, in the forest when I go cross-country skiing. And I have finished the section for the brim and I'm now working on the top part of the head. And yeah, it's just stockinette, so it's quite mindless. Um, I still have a bit to go before starting the decreases, but this is a nice wor uh, it's a nice whip to take with me if I'm going somewhere where I can't use too much of my brain power. So that's I've gotten some rows in and let's see um, I was at the cabin uh, trying to go skiing but it actually got pretty mild so a lot of the snow melted so I got a lot of knitting done and um, I have these beautiful woolen cones from I think it was woolen knit it's it's a British wool cone that I heard about from Crea Bea and uh, Cat Weaver from Heather and Hops. So this is 500 grams of British wool and this is the light gray natural, which is the favorite color out of all the cones that I got. I think I showed it two episodes ago. So I brought this and the gray merino with me to the cabin and I left that one at the cabin. And I did some swatches because I wanted to figure out what to make essentially. So I find that it's a, it's, it's a light fingering uh, weight yarn. I did first a swatch here in three millimeters. I knit three pearl bumps to tell me which needles I used for the sample. And then I did one with four millimeters um, and I preferred the fabric of this one. But still the gauge was quite, it was quite a tight gauge and I was struggling to find a pattern that I wanted to use for it. And I didn't really want to mix this color with a mohair because I really loved the color of this yarn in itself. And when you mix it with a silk mohair, the color of that will always the colors will blend so you will not get this exact color, right? Um, so I wanted to just use this and I wasn't sure if I could get a garment um, out of this held double. Maybe I would have, but I didn't want to play yarn chicken with this. So I also checked um, the merino held together with uh, Hasegawa silk mohair and it created this fabric which looks more of like a DK fabric. Um, so I have kept this watch, so now I know that I can knit something with that combo. So I've left that combo at the cabin. But then I didn't want to knit with this color right now. I wanted to knit with this color. I had just finished a gray sweater and I really wanted to make something with this. So I looked through my patterns and I ended up with casting on the ranunculus again. <laughs> this is my third ranunculus now. Um, the neckband 
is a bit tighter than I want it to be. So I'm just gonna stretch it out when it's drying to get it to look how I want it to be. I cast on in 5.5 millimeter needles, which is smaller than in the pattern. And my gauge is a lot tighter than in the pattern, but it's an oversized garment. So I think it's fine. It's gonna fit me. Um, I think maybe I did one more increase uh, to, to make the sleeves a bit bigger so they wouldn't be completely tight on my arms and hopefully it's enough. I can also just pick up a lot of stitches underneath the armhole um, to make the sleeves wider. Just do some modifications to make sure it fits. Uh, I have not measured my gauge. I'm just knitting along. After separating for the sleeves and body, I changed my needles to these beauties right here. This is the Haya Haya Sharps. Um, I have I have this Haya Haya Sharp, which I bought in Japan two years ago, just before the outbreak. And in this one, it ranges up to five, it's either 5 or 5.5 millimeter needles in this set and they are great for knitting with um, especially when I have yarns that tends to split. I really enjoy these because they have those sharp points so they catch the stitch very easily. And I was experiencing with this yarn that it's a two-ply and it's split quite easily so changing to these slightly sharper tips really um, helped with catching the stitches and knitting. And uh, so this is an ad for Haya Haya because they got in contact with me and sent me this kit, which is basically the same as this Haya Haya Sharp kit, just twice the amount of um, needles. So I had just a smaller range of needles and this is their uh, Deluxe Plus set. So there are 16 uh, different tips and they are four inch tips. So they're slightly shorter, which is great because then I can knit sleeves in the round on the small circular uh, and it just makes life easier on me. Uh, and also it has more cables than the small set that I had from before. And this also came with some stoppers is that what you call it these little um, things that you can screw on to um, your your needles so that your stitches don't run off which i thought was really great because my previous set didn't have that uh, what i will say is that if you look at this the until the 5 or 5.5 the join for the cables is a thin join so you can join them directly with the cables but for the larger needle sizes, the join is larger, so you need to screw on this uh, extra piece right here that modifies it to fit the cable. And that there's only one set of these joiners, so if you have several projects going with larger needle sizes, you can only use one. Uh, from this set at a time. So that's kind of a downsize. I don't know, maybe you can get more of these uh, joiner pieces, um, but if you're knitting with the smaller sizes, you can use them all at the same time. It doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy with this kit. I'm really honored that they wanted to send it to me because I really love my Haya Hayas. Um, and the plus side, side to the Haya Haya Sharps is that they go down all the way to, I think it's 2.5 or 2.25, let's see, 2.75, all the way down to 2.75. And the sets that I have in others from like Knitter's Pride, Knit Pro, they only go down to 3.5 and that's not enough for me because I do knit a lot with uh, 2.5, 275, and 3 millimeter needles. So this set allows me to also knit socks and things that has a smaller needle size, which is great. 
Yes, so I'm using that for this one and because they are shorter tips, I can also use them to knit the sleeves after I finish the body. Um, I don't know how long I'm making this body. Um, I'm just going to make sure that it's the same length as my favorite sized sweaters before doing the ribbing. And I think this is going to bloom very nicely with washing, uh, but it's still going to be a very light fabric that's see-throughy. So it's not going to be something that I wear with nothing underneath. At least I need some underwear. But because it is such a light fabric, it's the perfect sweater to scrunch up and bring along with me in a purse um, for those times of the year where you might get a little bit chilly, but maybe not all of the day. So it's going to be great for that. Yes. So that was all that I have knitted. I want to get into some acquisitions. So if that's not your cup of tea, then I will see you next time. If you do enjoy acquisitions like I do, then um, buckle up. So I had this beautiful set from uh, Haya Haya and I will include a list or a link to stockists below if anyone wants to try them out. Um, then I will put a link below where you can see where you can get it or who ships internationally, etc. And I also have some other things to show. Uh, maybe we can do it in like a chronological order. My cousin uh, took me to the yarn shop, uh, not against my will. Um, but I was being nice and came with her because she needed some yarn for Christmas gifts. And I saw this in their um, uh, on sale basket. It was like half off. So this is uh, the Regia Perfect design line by Sachemeyer. And it's an RNA and Carlos colorway. And I think there's a photo of how they will knit up here. So this ball is designed to give you two perfectly matched socks. It has like this ye yellow um, strand and that's where you start knitting where that ends and in the middle of the ball there's another one of these so you get the exact same matchy matchy um, pair of socks and I looked I was looking at this last year because it's very Christmassy to me but it's not the cheapest sock yarn so I didn't get it and then now when it was half off I had to get it so this will go into my stash I don't know if I will make this pair this year because uh, I do have some other socks that I want to knit up as well but if not then I can make this pair um, next year maybe like in the beginning of December to get into the Christmas spirit and mm, maybe we can start with uh, some advent. Um, I do have two mini skein advents this year, both in non superwash yarn because I really wanted to support that. There's not a lot of non superwash mini skein advents out there. So I have one from Crooks Fibers, which is Brittany from Canada, and I have one from Zakami Yarns, which I'm also a huge fan of, and I bought a lot of yarns from them. And I can't show you because I've put everything up in a very intricate system on my wall, but I will put a photo here. So I have the Crux fibers on top in a chronological order, and then the Zakami yarns below. And I have no idea what I'm gonna make with them, but I might put them into some future uh, Hildra Smittens since it's the perfect pattern for scraps and minis. Uh, but me and Sarah from Day to Day Knits, we have been doing a sort of four Sundays in Advent swap. So I sent her four parcels and she sent me four parcels. And the last two Sundays I now have to show you. So she sent me this beautiful marled yarn. This is a Knit Picks yarn. Um, 
interesting. What else does it say? It's a Simply Wool Twist, which is a worsted weight, and it's 218 yards per 100 grams. So she sent me one uh, last Sunday and two this Sunday, so I have three of them now. Whoop. So I can make something with these. I don't know what I will make yet. Um, it's 100% eco wool. So I don't think it's superwash because it would stay on it, right? If it was superwash. And it, this is made in Peru. So yeah, I'm not sure what I'll make yet, but I'm sure it will be something beautiful. And she sent me this, which is the Mulho Francesinha. <laughs> I am butchering that name. But this is for a special kind of dish. And there are instructions for preparations on the back here. So I'm really excited to try this. I'm assuming this is a Portuguese dish, Sara, um, based on the language on this. But I'm really excited to try it. Me and my boyfriend will make something uh, or make that. She also sent me this stunning bag, which is extremely lightweight. This is the Wool Enemy number no. one is what it says on it. And it has a moth, which I thought is so cute. Uh, and this is the Project Bag Wool Enemy with... I don't know who it's from. Oh, it's from Knit Picks. It's from Knit Picks too. This is my first encounter with Knit Picks. We don't have it here in Norway. So I'm really excited to try some of this out. And this is maybe what I'm the most excited about that she sent. This is also from Knit Picks. Um, this is Wool of the Andes Unspun Roving. And it's 100% Peruvian Highland wool. And I think the color is Amber Heather. Um, I am not sure. I think I'll have to open it and see, but I will keep them in this to protect them from the wool enemy. I'm not sure if this comes as like a pencil roving or if it's completely... Oh yeah, so it, it, it's more like fiber, so I will have to spin this up myself. I think I'm going to have to save this for when I have a little bit more experience because this feels really nice and the color is everything that I love. So I want to be able to spin this of a better quality than what my spinning is right now. Oh, but it's such a beautiful color. It reminds me sort of of the cinnamon color. Um, that I have in wool comb. So yes, beautiful, beautiful. She sent me more things um, during these two Sundays. I got this wool soap. I have never tried a wool soap bar. Um, I've only tried the liquid kind of wool soaps, um, like Soak and... What's the name of the other one that's my favorite? I don't remember now, but it has like lavender scent and eucalyptus. Um, but this doesn't seem hard. Uh, you can either put it on your hands first and then go across your woolens, or you can um, take the bar across your woolens and then rinse out afterwards. So I'm really excited to try this. This is from Twig and Horn in the rosewood. It smells really nice. So I'm excited to try that out. And she also sent me a beautiful wine mug. I asked her what this translated to, but um, I've already forgotten. I'll have to check. Bebe mais um povel. And also some lovely tea. I'm always scared to send teas because the post office lady here told me once that they will burn it when they see stuff like that in there. I don't know if they think it's cocaine or something, but ever since I've not been daring to send almost anything that can look scary in my yarn parcels. 
And I also got this uh, Loopville Miller? Loopville yarn. Loopville yarn. Which is uh, one of those gauge gauge rulers, but also for your needle sizes. Uh, oh wow, 19. I don't think I own a 19 size needle. I don't think I would knit with a 19. That sounds like tendonitis or some, something very painful for my um, for my wrists and fingers. 1.5. I Oh, I do have a 1.5 needle, so I can actually use this for all of my needle sizes. So that is really great. And also she sent me five tags from Twig and Horn. Horn, not warm. And they say, stay warm. So you can sew these onto your knitting. Uh, both ways works. I think, no. It has to be this way out because if not the writing is in the wrong direction. So those were my lovely advents sent from Sara. And then I have some more. So if we're doing chronological order, then I went to the cabin and my father and I uh, went to the city closest to the cabin. It's like half an hour drive because we needed some Christmas gifts for my grandmother. And she's the one who taught me how to knit, hence the name Knitting Traditions that's passed down through generations. So I wanted to get her some yarn for Christmas, some sock yarn, because she doesn't really get out of the house anymore because of problems with her legs. So um, I figured I would buy her some yarn and they had this store, this is gonna crinkle, sorry, called Strikkeglede, which means knitting joy um, in that town. And I'd never been there. I'll put some footage at the end because once I went through the doors, I was in awe. This was a really great knitting store. Um, they had a little bit of everything and they had yarns that I hadn't seen in Norwegian knitting stores before. A lot of Norwegian knitting stores have like the same brands and um, where I live here, one of the stores have Rauma, one of the store has Hillesvog. Usually you don't get them both in one store. But this store had Rauma, Hillesvog, they had Isair, they had Knitting for Olive, they had hedgehog, they had fjord fibers, um, just a lot of different yarns. And they also had like some knickknacks that I love. So I had to support this store. I just had to because when something this great exists, you don't want them to go bankrupt. So I supported them. And I think I will just empty the bag now so you don't have all the noise. All right, so I started with the most important thing. I found some yarn for my grandmother. Um, she's mainly a sock knitter these days. And I saw this yarn that I have never seen before um, in this beautiful color. And it's called Mellan Ragi from Yarbo. Oh, it's from Yarbo. So it's a Swedish brand that I have yet to try. But now I can try it because I got one of these for my grandmother as well as a turquoise one and the same um, because she likes those colors a lot as well. So I got her those two balls and then I had to get this color for myself. It's the color 28399. So this is a Swedish yarn, which I've been trying... I've never seen this yarn brand in other Norwegian stores. So this was a nice surprise. So this is a traditional Nordic sock yarn and it's 260 meters per 100 grams. So I'm excited to try and see how this knits up. It's 75% wool and then it's 25% polyamide. And the wool is super washed. Yeah, I could feel that. I was feeling it and it was a bit like, <laughs> you know, that kind of noise. It's, um, but the color is stunning and it will make a great pair of socks 
probably for gifting. And then when I came into the store, they had this beautiful table with all kinds of accessories for knitting. And I saw this and I have a lot of interchangeable needles, um, but I also have some circular ones. And this one is perfect for putting those in if you're traveling and you want to bring them with you. And specifically, I'm thinking about um, sock needles. I don't know what happens to my needles. They get caught up in projects and then I don't find them for a while. <laughs> but I got some more of the Chow Gu Premium Stainless Steel because I really love the cord that these have for Magic Loop. Um, and I use Magic Loop for the toes of my socks. So I got these and I plan to keep them in here together without, without the, the packaging, of course. And it's going to be a great um, accessory to keep my needles stored away. Oh, and the, this was a local maker who created bags um, from her home. And it says Strikte, which means knit it. Uh, it's designed by TKG. I haven't heard of her before, but her products were beautiful. And then um, I saw I saw this yarn. This is a yarn by Camarosa, which again, another uh, yarn brand that I've wanted to try, but I don't really see them in stores here. So this is Camarosa. And the base here is called Mona Strole, which has Stellina in it. So it has like a bit of sparkle. I chose this color because the sparkle was gold and not silver, which is my preferred. And the color is light beige. 9008. And it's 68% baby alpaca, 12% merino, 16% polyamide, and 4% polyester. And I'm thinking, I wanted, I don't know what I'll make with this yet, but this essentially could work as a silk mohair would work in other garments that you can pair it with another strand and i think that's what i'm gonna do so i'll put it into my stash because my silk mohair stash was low on neutral colors so now i have five balls it should be plenty for a sweater um, to pair it with some other yarn like for example uh, this once i finish knitting my ranunculus i'll have one garment in this pure color and then i could pair them together and i think that would be really beautiful as well and they had um they had knitting for olive i was looking at their merino which i know a lot of people have knit with but it was like 450 meters so it's quite thin and honestly, I don't know what I would make with it. I don't think I could have held it single. I don't really make children's clothing and holding it double would be very expensive. So instead I got some of their silk mohair, which they also carried. And I got this in the marzipan colorway. Again, a neutral because I am low on the neutrals in my little mohair stash. Um, and I have a lot of patterns that I want to knit, which are held together with a silk mohair. So yeah, this is going into my stash for some future knitting. The last two things that I got from this store were some hedgehog fibers. I saw this on the wall and I've never seen or felt hedgehog fibers before, but I think it was Jonathan from Jonathan's days. I think he knit something with this, or maybe I'm mistaken, but he's Irish at least. Um, and I saw these colors and I, I, I specifically saw this color and I just had to get it. This is the rusty nail. 
So this is a 90% merino and a 10% nylon. Um, I'm, I'm assuming that it's superwash, but it doesn't actually say that it is superwash, so maybe it isn't. Maybe. It doesn't have that uh, plastic coating feel that some superwash has, so it might actually be without, I am not sure. But the color is stunning, so I don't care what it is, it's just beautiful and I wanted to get it. And then next to it, they had this colorway, which isn't typically my colorway, but aesthetically, it just looks so beautiful. So I had to get it. And I was thinking they would make a really nice pair of socks where um, this is the contrast heel, cuff and toes. And then I can make another pair with this. I don't know. One of the reasons I don't usually gravitate towards these yarns is that I don't I don't love the way variegated yarn knits up, that it's like blotchy and stripy and I prefer the either like a solid color or like a solid color with a little bit of interest um, or stripes um, over this, but again, it was just so pretty. This is the Bridget, Brigid and um, yeah, no, I just had to get them. I thought they were too pretty to not try. And I've never tried hedgehog fibers before, so I'm excited to give it a go. And then these are the same same base. So um, Christina and Patricia are two sisters behind the company Twister. And they got in contact with me asking if I would like to try their new invention. So. This is an ad for them. Um, they have created a knitting tool that allows you to knit on the go. So you can walk um, and this tool carries your ball and it rotates around so you can knit without um, any troubles. And they asked me if I would be interested to try this. And if you've been with me, you know that I love to knit uh, when I'm walking, especially in the summer, it's too cold to do it now, but in the summer, I like to go on walks and I'll knit socks when walking. But it is a problem with the yarn, how to carry it and it gets a bit tangled. So I said that I would love to try it and it came in this beautiful box. And I just wanted to show it before opening up because I thought it was packaged so nicely. So it's Twister with two Zs. Um, and, and I have to admit, this was very new to me when they got in contact with me. I had never seen anything like this and I had to go to their page to really understand how this works. But essentially you, will, you can hold this on your wrist or you can hang it on something if you want to sit and knit and just not have your ball all over the place. And then this goes you can separate this and then maybe i can show you with this ball so you push push this through and then i'm not i can't hold this up and show and then once you've pushed it through the ball you put it inside and you have this. So if you have the ball band off, you just pull the needle and as you knit it will rotate um, without any problems. So you can walk and knit at the same time. So I am really excited, honestly, to try this. I think it's going to make my uh, walk and knitting experience a lot smoother. And also, like, in the future, when the world opens up again and it's possible to fly somewhere, I can have this on the plane and just hang it on that little thing on the chair and that will prevent my ball of yarn of falling on that nasty floor and rolling across and yeah, it'll just, it'll be really nice. So thank you so much for letting me try this. I will put a link below if anyone else is interested. Um, it's made in Sweden because their father was Swedish. I think their mother was Puerto Rican, if I read correctly. Um, it says on their website, they have their whole story on there. 
Um, but essentially their father created this for their mother. Um, but yeah, really, really excited to knit using this. So the last thing that I have to show you is a very generous gift sent to me from Sue Wilkins, who is the maker and creator behind the Prairie Bag Works, or is it just Prairie Bag Works? Um, Prairie Bag Works. And she has an online store where she creates these beautiful, beautiful project bags. I believe this is one of her medium sizes. And it's just so cute with the little sheep on there and the pastel colors. I thought this was just stunning and it's beautifully made. It has two pockets on the inside as well. And she sent me some um, sort of project notes that I can put in my project bags in case I were to forget it somewhere. Um, it says who it belongs to and all the details, which I should really get better at writing down because I keep forgetting. And she also has her business card with uh, a ruler on it, which is also really great because I need it in my life. And she included some um, tags, uh, handmade for from, and it has washing instructions on the back. So if you gift someone something, you can give, put these instructions on there. And she also has a little sheep stitch marker or progress keeper. Um, in here as well and as if this wasn't enough she also sent me this beautiful uh, stain this is River Twist 100% merino wool and it's a 100 gram grain approximately and I think the color is Trout Creek and this is a worsted weight yarn and it's from Mount Mount something, it has a tag over the full name, but it's hand painted yarns. Uh, I don't know if I can see the whole name because it's underneath that tag, but it's, it's Mount, <laughs> Mount, eh. maybe it's Mountain? something it's mountain something it says underneath here and it's just a beautiful beautiful blend of colors I think this would be really nice to put into a color work project because you would have the color changes go into there and it's wonderfully soft and squishy mm, beautiful and that's not all no the reason she sent me something to begin with is she wanted to send me some yarn bowls which she creates and makes herself and i just thought that this aesthetic of this was extremely beautiful um and she sent me two so she sent me one for a single skein project like socks for example and it says yarn snob on here <laughs> and I think this will definitely uh, stay on my coffee table because it's just beautiful I don't understand how she makes this but I love the simplicity of the natural colors it's so beautiful and she sends me this one which is a double bowl so you can do stranded color work so this would be perfect for my mittens where i'm always knitting um except for the cuffs i'm always knitting with st two strands at the time and you can put your strands through these places so it keeps them separate which is great for um color work knitting so I think these are some of the most beautiful accessories that I own and I've seen a lot of um, knitting bowls or yarn bowls. I have one of those ceramic ones, but in my opinion, this is, this is a lot more uh, my aesthetic um, than the ceramic ones because this is also made from fiber and I love the color of it and it's just so beautiful. 
So yeah, I will put the link to her store below. She has a lot of these in her store right now and she also has some bags. Um, I can't wait to try this out. Um, my boyfriend will just have to accept that we now have yarn on our coffee table because this deserves to be there. So yes, that was all of today's content. A lot of acquisitions, beautifully gifted things, bought things, lots of knitting, um, my exciting new project hopefully coming out soon, and yes, I think that's enough. I hope I've been able to look at the camera, I hope you enjoyed it, and um, a little life update since last time. I've had some time off because I worked most of the summer, so I went to the cabin with my father and we we are surrounded by a lot of forest and trees, so we found a Christmas tree that we brought inside. We decorated a little bit for Christmas. We wanted to go skiing every day, but we were a bit unlucky with the weather. Um, I think a month ago it was minus 28 degrees Celsius. And when we were there, it was eight plus. So that's uh, quite a substantial change in temperature. So all the snow was melting and it wasn't really good for skiing, but we did go once um, and I'll put a video at the end showing a little bit from that. And I just got to do a lot of knitting. And now I'm back at home. I have a few shifts to work and then I'm going to the cabin again for the Christmas weekend before coming back to work again, but it's going to be really nice to spend some time with family, hopefully go skiing, because I need to move, I can't just sit, knit and eat, that's... it's mentally healthy, but it's not physically healthy, I think. I should move. Probably. Uh, <laughs> but I think it's going to be really nice. Uh, Le yesterday was Sunday. We call it Dirty Sunday. Uh, it's a family tradition and a Norwegian tradition for some to eat boiled sheep's head. We call it Smalahove. The Sunday before Christmas, uh, together with other side dishes, which are very Christmassy dishes, uh, boiled potatoes, and then we have some kind of root, uh, mashed root uh, thingy. Uh, and some homemade sausages. So we had that yesterday and it was really nice. It looks quite horrific um, But it's it's one of those old traditions because Norway used to be quite a poor country We were mostly farmers and the Norwegian landscape is not very forgiving We have a lot of mountains and fjords and at least on the west coast. It was quite a harsh life. So um the farmers used to use up all parts of the animal and we have a lot of sheep in Norway as well as pigs and cattle but sheep um, are quite common because they live outside most of the year um, they send them up into the mountains in the summer and they get them back down in the fall and they kind of roam free in the winter they are inside when it's a lot of snow because they can't get food outside um, so when they would slaughter sheep for the Christmas meal, which on the west coast are dried and smoked um, ribs of the sheep, which are then boiled, uh, they would also use all the other parts of the sheep as well. So the sheep's head, it's a delicacy, <laughs> where we boil it um, after it's been smoked and prepared for further back, you know, because they, they would prepare the meat so they could store them for months without it going bad. Uh, so you soak the sheep's head for one or two days, because if, if not, it's very salty, and then we boil it, and then we eat the meat off of it, and it's extremely tender, quite salty and delicious meat. You just need to get over the fact that the eyes and teeth are really looking up at you. So I usually get the meat off really quick and get rid of the skull before my appetite goes away but it, it does taste really nice and it's nice that all the parts of the animals are used uh, these days we don't prepare the intestines ourselves that you we use to make the sausages we buy already cleaned out intestines 
Although it was giving me flashbacks to anatomy class when I was preparing the sausages, so I did lose my appetite a little bit. <laughs> but surprisingly enough, no problem eating them when they were all cooked and smoked and prepared. So that was really nice. I do love these old traditions and I hope that they don't disappear um, with the years. And a lot of different places in Norway have a lot of different traditions. Uh, we used to be separated by mountains, so there are differences between the north, west, south and east. Uh, also in what we eat for Christmas. So my family eats these ribs of the sheep. Um, I think on the east coast it's more common to have a porks... Uh, we call it ribe. I think it's a porks belly or back but it has the skin on it that gets like um, crispy and raised in the oven uh, some people eat fish for Christmas there are lots of different um, things to eat we have a little bit of a mix so we'll have the the sausages and the sheep's ribs on Christmas and then the Christmas day we'll have the pork and maybe some like meat cakes called Madista Kake which isn't really my favorite, but it's nice to have a little bit for everyone, so everyone gets something they like. My favorite are the side dish, which is made of mashed uh, root vegetables. It's delicious. Alright, so that was a little bit of our traditions. I'm really looking forward to Christmas Eve. I don't think I'll record another episode before then, but... Um, we will be finishing up our stash along on Christmas Eve, so I will pick a winner and send out the last prize um, in the beginning of January. And if you like knit alongs, I am hosting the Rustic Knit Along starting January 1st, and I think it'll run all year long. It's kind of uh, an ode to the rustic yarns, the non superwash animal fibers, to let them shine a little bit because I love them and. I hope everyone else will love them just as much and there are different kinds of rustic animal fibers for different kinds of sensitive skins. You know, you have the merinos, um, the silk mohairs, the camel and cashmere, which are like the, the softer ones, the yak, really soft. And then you have the more uh, rustic sheep breeds. There's lots of different sheep breeds. Um, some are more itchy than others, uh, but they all have their great properties, so I hope that people will join me with knitting with some more non-superwash um, animal fibers for 2022 to stay warm and snuggly. So, yes, I will see you when I see you. I hope if you celebrate Christmas that you have a lovely Christmas, or if you celebrate something else that you enjoy, and if not, that you just have a lovely end of year. And I will see you soon. Bye!